starts the meeting. Okay, we're live, we're live now. But sit, okay, so I have one attendee. Just a minute. Oh, there are more. Okay, now there are a whole bunch of attendees. Okay. So maybe they can come in using you know from the attendee route now. Okay, so just 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 bear with me. Just bear with me. now it's connecting. All right, good. Okay, I got it. I'll, we'll take it from here. I don't know what's going to happen yet. Okay, thank you. Can somebody promote me in? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to. I can't. I, is Dana in with a telephone number? Because here she is. Okay, okay. Hi, how's it going? Te technical difficulties, Dana, this evening. Okay. Um, okay. Hey, Dana, you're on. Okay. Is there anybody else? Else, else is there? Hold on. Peggy yeah, Jackson. I was trying to get in. She just texted me. Can you guys see me? Because I don't think I have um, an option to show my face. No, I, I can't see you. Okay. Got it. Got it. It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening. We have Ruben. So, so um, Dana is in. Just a minute. Let's just make sure we can hear Ruben. Elsa. Hi. Okay, we can hear. Uh, and we can see Elsa. Great. Okay, so you we should be able to see Dana now, too. Dana, are you there? Yeah. Hi, guys. There Hi. you are. Okay. <laughs> Is there anybody else that I'm missing at this Peggy. point? Peggy. Don't see Peggy. Peggy, are you there yet? I really look forward to when we can meet in person again. We know. So, so Dan, tell can you just tell the public that we're having some difficulties and we, we will be- Everybody, if you can hear us, we're having a little technical difficulty uh, and we're trying to get everybody squared away. So just bear with us and we'll be with you shortly. Okay, Peggy's indicating that she can see but can't speak but I can't find her. That's part of the problem. I cannot find her. Oh, and then Dave is on. Dave Finch, can you let him in, in uh, Dan? Dan? I Dave can. Finch. I can see him, just hold on. Dave should be on now. Oh, that's definitely better. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Well, ju just bear with me because I cannot find Peggy. So there are 25 attendees, but I can't get to them all. All right, so Peggy is, can I let her in or not? Let no. her in. You, you can let, you, you don't have, you don't have the authority to, that's the problem. All right, she, on mine at least, she's about fifth from the bottom. But I can't get to the bottom, that's part of the problem. I don't know why. I can. Can I let her in? No. Okay, I finally got. Peggy, you win? Yep, she's on. Peggy, you she is. All right. Awesome, Peggy. There you are. Take off the mute. John. Got it. Okay. Tony, you need a motion to open the meeting. All right. Can I have a motion to open the March 22nd, 2022 Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee meeting? Andrew, second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So this is the the March 22nd Village of Mamaroneck Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee meeting. Welcome all. Um, as I say every month or from the last couple, our dates of the meetings are posted on the Village website. 
Sorry for the delay. We had technical difficulties, as you may have heard. Um, we have a big agenda tonight, and I'm going to pick and choose what we present just because we're not going to have enough time. I'd like to start with the minutes, which is item three anyhow. February 22nd, which I circulated both to us on the committee and was posted on the on the village website. So do I have a motion to approve the February 22nd minutes? Tony, I was absent on that evening, so I will. I'll make a I motion. All right, second. Second. Uh, and, uh, just Elsa in favor, ayes or nays? Aye. Ayes. Aye. Dana, you missed, right? Yes, I wasn't there. Okay. Okay. So the minutes for the February 22nd meeting are approved. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to have to start with updates. And uh, the item four is Army Corps updates. So, Dan, what I think I'd like to do is just give an update on where we are and then, and then just have a couple of questions from the public. We're not going to be able to answer everybody's question, I don't think, um, but we'll give it a shot, okay? So, okay. Well, just tell me, for those who want to comment, you need to raise your hand and uh, I'll relay that to uh, Tony and he will allow either say we can let you speak or not. And, okay. and if I can, uh, Tony and Trustee Natchez, if individuals have questions, they can also, I believe, type it in. I don't so think that, there's a chat, Andy. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> The flood committee, I, I got on, on in December, probably since Ida, the, uh, the flood committee, FMAC as we call ourselves, has been asking to have a meeting with the village, okay? And- um, With the Army with, Corps. With the Army Corps, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks, Peg. <laughs> um, and the reason to have the meeting was to, to try to do a, as, as, as kind of a construction project to have a kickoff meeting. And the purpose of a kickoff meeting is to kind of get everybody on the same page. What are you doing? When are you doing it? How are you doing it, et cetera? So um, also the FMAC put together a list of questions for the Army Corps, which Peg as chair sent to the Corps in the fall. In November, in in November, November. early December. And again, those questions had to deal with um, things that were in the, in the previous plan that perhaps might have changed because of the amount of Ida flooding and or things that we might want to tweak as the Army Corps calls it. Anyway, that really didn't go too well. So when I got on in December, I heard the frustration from the committee members and I started to go after to try to have that meeting. And um, I wasn't much more successful. The only thing I was successful at, and this is kind of a bit of a joke, is that we, I found out that the, the village did meet with the Army Corps, which is great. And the good news is that the project is progressing and the Army Corps has, has the sign offs from DEC and the state and the feds, and they are starting to design the, the project. So I Tony, can you, can you just inform everybody as to when that meeting took place? Okay, so that meeting, so I will, Dan. So basically I, I, I basically asked that I have an update from, from either the mayor or Jerry, our, our village manager, Jerry Barbario. Barbario. And um, I had a quick discussion with Mr. Barbario this afternoon. And I, I had drafted some questions, which I, I'm now just gonna go through them. I'll try to be clear and concise, but that's what I tried. And I have the answers from the village. So like I say, the good news, the project's moving ahead. And um, so- When was that meeting, Tony? Tony? Yes. Meeting was on March 10th. March 10th, 2022, March 10th. right? And basically the village was there. Um, Who from the village? From the, the mayor and Jerry Barbieri, um, reps from the county, the state, the feds and the army corps, right? Which is from the village, Tony. It was the mayor and the village manager, that's it? That's it, from what I understand. And I'm just, I'm just trying to paraphrase what I, what I spoke to Jerry about this afternoon, okay? Um, I asked why the FMSC wasn't invited and basically was told that the, that the, the Army Corps wants to have a public meeting at 60% design 
And at that point, we'll be able to get all of our questions answered. I asked, would we get questions to the, to the letter that, you, that the FMAC sent in November? And the answer was basically, we don't know, but you can definitely get them at the 60% design. I asked, what is the schedule for the project? Basically the design schedule, they feel that for the first four parts, which I'm gonna go over in a minute, four to eight months to get to 60%, right? So Jerry said, you know, six months is probably what they're shooting for. And that's about what? So, um, so Tony, is that, said, four, okay. is that four to eight months from their meeting on March 10th or four to eight months from another date, sir? Well, I think it's four to eight months from, they started design like late January, early February. So probably around February 1st, I think. Yeah. That's as accurate as I can be. And I wouldn't, you know, sure. that's as accurate as I can be. Um, I then asked, okay, which parts of the project are they designing first, right? So, what it, so I'm just gonna list the parts. Ward Avenue Bridge and Channel Widening, Waverly Avenue Bridge and Channel Widening, non-structural, and I said, okay, what do you mean by non-structural? Home elevations. Um, and then the last piece was the culvert on the Jefferson Avenue Bridge. Um, oh, I then said, well, at least with the culverts in Jefferson Avenue parking lot, not bridge, Jefferson Avenue parking lot, there are concerns that that might not be the best solution. Are there, do you think there'll be an ability for us and the village to tweak that and you know maybe do other things like an open channel flow, something like that? And Jerry was basically, I really don't know. I don't know where the core's head's at, but he thought that there would be an ability to to tweak that design. Um, because I said, you know, Ida, we all know clogged up, clogged up the, the bridge, right? The, the Plaza Avenue bridge, how is the tunnel not going to get blocked? So he thought that there was a possibility that the Army Corps would re redesign it. Um, that's what I gathered. And um, at the moment, that's as much information as I have. And like I say, I'd like to be positive because we got $88 million, it's all signed and sealed. They're proceeding with the design. They're expecting to have a public meeting at 60%, which if, it's, if we take an estimate of six months, that would be February 1st. So March, April, May, June, July, August 1st, that would be the six month. And you know, could be sooner, could be a little bit later, but that's, that's about what, what they, that's the gist of it. So I'll take a few questions from MA. Um, FM. I'd like to make a few points, if I may. Um, the flood committee sent a memo to the village of Mamaroneck on September the 21st with 20 some odd points of questions that we had based on Ida. We have not had 19 of them, excuse me. We have not had any answered. On October 28, we sent a further memo to the village of Mamaroneck and we sent 28 points, 20, 26 points, and that has not been answered. We sent an email to the Army Corps of Engineers in November, and the Army Corps response was, these questions are very pertinent. We look forward to meeting with you to discuss them. We then met with the Village of Mamaroneck board in early December, and we were asked to pick out our five top points out of the Army Corps memo. Out of the 20, yep. Out of the 28, and we did. And the first one on everyone's agreed list was we need to have a meeting with the Army Corps. And the mayor and the village manager said, we are in the process of trying to put that together. That still hasn't happened. We then sent a further memo this Saturday the 19th to the Army Corps from the committee with a shortened, tightened request list. Um, and basically saying, we have some different points of view. We'd like to make sure that all the different neighborhoods are included. And we're trying, this was compiled over many months of people's input from the community. And we find out that there was a meeting held, no reporting was done back to us as a committee. And I'm, I'm, 
I think this is totally wrong. Peggy, if I can. Please. This started in the 80s with round one. We lost that. Tony, as you know, and you well articulated several years ago, this is the second fight at the apple. We cannot afford to lose the second apple. The entire community, not just one or two parts of this community, the entire village depends upon the success of this. Transparency is absolutely key. The fact that we are just finding this out is outrageous and completely and utterly unacceptable on so many different categories. We have 20,000 plus in this community. We have the right to know. The members of this committee have the right to know. The fact that we had two individuals on behalf of the village only attending this meeting and we're just finding this out now is completely and utterly unacceptable and it's clearly not transparent. As chair of the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee in the past, when I was in Washington in 2017, we prefaced, and it was paramount, transparency and participation of the village of Mamaroneck. And this yeah, is I'm interrupt for one sec. In addition, we were included as the FMAC in all these meetings. We, we were, were invited in, to participate. Okay. We were in the city. We're in yep. one room, sat a community in Long Island, and we sat in the other. Guess what? The other community got the exit. We got to go on to Washington because it was a collective effort of private residents, the municipality, state representatives, and county representatives. We need to do this and we need to do it now. And you know what, Tony? I'm not venting at you. I'm not venting at Trustee Natchez. This has to go back up to all of our elected officials, including the village manager and assistant village manager. We need to work together. Transparency is paramount. There are 30 people online tonight that all have prior questions, most of whom have certain issues. We all have different issues, but one common is flooding. And this isn't a civil bullet, but it's certainly gonna help tremendously everyone in this community, irrespective of where you're located. We deserve answers and we deserve transparency. And we want the project to be the best it can be for the entire village of Mamaroneck. Anybody and, and, that's getting wet is getting, regardless of socioeconomic status, religion, race, creed, we're all getting flooded. We all need to pull together and make this happen for everyone. And it needs and, to be the best it can for everyone. And there are certain changes since uh, 2017 when we initially got approved. Ida served as an example. Many areas that didn't get impacted in 2007 definitely got destroyed and impacted a couple months ago. So the concept of tweaking this, it's, again, it's not about changing it or changing direction. It's about making it better. We How also, can we make it better? We also have a point of view on this committee, as many of us are flood victims, that is different than what the village manager or the mayor may have. We're not asking CORE to change the project. We're asking them to talk to us and communicate I, with us I, about our thoughts. I think, and, I, and, and um, Chair Gelber, I think we should open this up to the public, but I will say this, a meeting with the mayor, a meeting with the village manager or deputy village manager is absolutely paramount. We have to have their participation. The village manager, or a deputy manager should absolutely be part of our communications, part of our meetings. We used to, in 2017, every single meeting were. we had. They always were. were Since always 2007, present. we never had a meeting without the village we, manager we, we, or the assistant village manager. It's very important to have this. We have to assure transparency. Again, we all don't have to agree. We didn't all agree on 2017, but the plan that did come down the pike finally took a bit of all of the input. We have to continue that theme. So I would urge Tony that we reach back out to um, the village manager and our mayor and ask for additional participation in our meetings. Please. Can I, can I ask, is that a, um, so Andrew, you're asking that and Peg that A, we have more communication 
with the village manager and the mayor, but specifically, let me finish, that specifically that we have, as we had at, in the previous round, either the village manager or the assistant village manager participate in our meetings, correct? Absolutely. That's a given. But I think Andrew's going farther and saying we need to try and get on the Army Corps schedule to have a discussion with them. We want to talk to them. We're not going to try and we want the project to be better. And we are we're working in a vacuum because nobody's talking to us and nobody's communicating with us. Okay, so I hear that. I definitely hear that. I mean, I've been hearing that <laughs> since December. No, not Tony, because... since September, we've been asking for answers to questions. And Meg, I'm not, not, I'm not, one disagree thing I'm not that's disagreeing an answer. with you at all. Okay. I said I wanted to keep the meeting positive tonight. So I think the fact that we know there was a meeting, we got some input from our, our leaders on what happened at the meeting is a step in the right direction. Because up until... This afternoon at 3.30, we were pretty much in the dark, right? So and I think Tony, made... you know what? As as chair of our committee, you're our leader. And and you know what? I'm sorry that you just found out today. This is something that I hope I wish in the future. You know what? This is a teachable moment. Going forward, again, transparency communication has to work that way. Otherwise, then the committee gets we get put in a corner, and then the, the fine residents of our community then say, Well, what's going on? Why don't we know what's going on? One thing I will, I commend you and Peg back when you guys were co-chairs back in, in, in 2017, when we were going through all this, one thing that we did, we had so many meetings. We had meetings when we weren't even scheduled to, to participate, to get the involvement of our community, whether or not the elected officials or village managers or whomever else showed up, we still were there. You and Peggy were there. Um, uh, we had, there we had conversations with Jean Brickman, who was running the project. Matt Crosby would talk to us. We have no communication so with the court. Let, let's all. use this as a teachable moment. Let's make it positive, Tony. Let's use this as a teachable make moment. Make it happen. And, and let's, let's go forward. And I think we should open it up so the rest of the community can be heard this evening. Okay. So... Dan, do you want to? Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Bianco has his hand up. Michael, go ahead. Hi, um, I just wanted to say, and I'm sure that Tony might have more to say later, but I just wanted to say after hearing the criticisms from Peggy and um, others, um, so far, uh, all we were told is that there was, uh, I believe, one meeting or maybe it was two, and that, and that we're, we know that the meeting happened. And uh, it, I felt like it was said in a way that it was like an accomplishment. And I just think that uh, a lot of residents are really tired of hearing um, things like that. And they just want to see some progress made. Thank you, Michael. So we. Informed each step. So okay, but we. hang on a minute. Michael, you still on? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Okay, so yes, I'm, I'm saying I want to be positive because I think that's the way I am and that's the way I operate. And the last time I was the chair of the committee, we had... We had so much teeth gnashing, yelling, screaming, it was ridiculous. And I just kept saying, no, we got to be positive and make this thing work. And so that's what I'm saying again tonight. We got to be positive and make this thing work. I'm saying we found out that there was a meeting. We did get some information. And, you know, I don't know whether you heard, but they identified the four parts of the project that they're designing right now. And so, so we're better off to me today, right now, than we were a week ago or three days ago, because we were, I'm, it, right now I'm being as transparent as I can, as much as I have a little more information than I had a week ago, a day ago, right? Tony, so, Tony, if I can just interrupt, I think what Michael's also saying, is not a matter of just having a meeting, but the transparency of communicating that back to the people. If this meeting was held back on March 10th, it's March 22nd, that was 12 days ago. That there's no reason with the amount of mass media and Instagrams and Facebooks, there's man means to get the messages out. So it's one thing to have the meeting, but get the message out so people understand that what is being done, how many steps forward we're taking. And I think, again, this is a teachable moment of how we can communicate, not just with flood mitigation, but to 20,000 people that call them Marinette Coleman. But the, in, the most guiling thing about all of this is that it wasn't communicated to the committee and it wasn't communicated to the public. What is happening is happening behind closed doors, and it's just wrong. Okay. Next up is Kelly. Kelly, go ahead. 
You have to unmute. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for uh, letting me uh, uh, talk for a second. I just uh, uh, kind of as a newcomer to this whole program, I wanted to know, is there a way that we can get a place at that table that they're having a meeting? It sounds to me from what Peggy was saying um, that they, they've been pushing us off and not really being inclusive in their discussions with the Army Corps. And I just wanted to see if there's a there's a, a way in your experience in the past that we can move forward and be have have Tony or or somebody at that meeting, you know, yeah, so like, that they can they can communicate back to us. You're absolutely right. In the past, um, all of the members of the flood committee that could make the trips would go into the city or would go to Washington or would be on a conference call. The meetings were open to all of us and members of the public. Our frustration is your frustration because none of us have an avenue for communication at this point. And that how, means- How do we, yeah, how can we move forward with that then? What's, what's, the, what's the step? How can we get that think, seat at the I table? I think what we need to do is make it clear to the, um, the mayor and the village manager that the committee and the public, if you agree with us, you should be writing emails that we don't find that this is acceptable and that we would like it to the table. Just for clarification, the board of trustees was not informed about this meeting. We met after the 10th. In your point of, in fact, when we met and we had the hearing in Washington, um, some of us, including myself, went to Washington and right. appeared before the Army Corps, whereas others actually met in the conference room at the regatta and actually participated from afar. But the key thing here, Kelly, is participation transparency, and I will absolutely give Tony and Peg the credit. Back then, the community was extraordinarily splintered, but we were able through communication, through open meetings, we're able to arrive at the concerns, convey those in a very articulate, non-emotional way to the Army Corps, and they were incredibly responsive. That's why we were able to secure it and bring back a good policy back to the village of Mamaroneck. So, it sounds like to, it sounds like to me we need to, we need we need we need to come up with a plan maybe with us on how we're going to make our communications better maybe we should you know I mean you know how are we going to do this because I think we're kind of saying the same thing we know it but I don't think we're really coming up with what are we going to do the problem Steve is not our communication it's that there's no communication from the other end back to us and that's okay. got to change but we, we could only let me there, there are a couple of other people who have not spoken okay. Okay. Dan Dan let me just You're, let me respond to Kelly, okay, please. So a couple of people have asked me what they could do. And what I said was, as we did in 2016, 17, please come to the meetings. Absolutely. So when I look at this list that tonight, there are quite a few people listening. I think this is key that when everybody shows up um, and as you all know, and thank you for showing up that Everyone kind of the, the you know the village I think is going to wake up to see okay people need information it's not just Tony Peg and the FMAC who's saying they need information the entire village it's, it's the entire village so really thank you all for coming on tonight it's really and, and Tony, wonderful to see you Tony as you're reading this I'm looking at the side of who's on I see individuals from every part of this community whether it's the Heights Washingtonville Industrial Orienta Shurakers. I, I see, I'm seeing uh, the commercial district. This is great. This is how it starts, Kelly. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Tony, uh, maybe if I, if I may, to move on, uh, the next person was Dennis Drogan. Dennis, you're on. You have to unmute yourself. Are you there? Dennis is on. Yeah, he, you're off. You're on. You're, you can speak now, Dennis. I am on, thanks. Sorry for joining late. Um, this is Dennis Drogan, the Assistant Building Inspector. So um, I hear your concerns. Um, I'll be sitting with the committee and listening to your concerns um, moving forward. And uh, I'm making some notes in between. So um, as you have the concerns and they come up, I will stress them. And as for the remarks of the um, uh, the lack of communication from the village to the board. Um, I think that, you know, there, there is growth inside of it and there are some things still at the administrative level um, and the trickle down should happen a lot quicker. 
not saying trickle down as being demeaning, but you know, we, we have to see the flow of information to the board and back and forth. So a cleaner line of communication clearly has been stated is necessary at this point. Dennis, I, but welcome Dennis and thank you very much. So Dennis, are you basically going to become our sort of liaison between the village, if you will, staff and, and Dan and the committee? So the role has not been, it, it, I was put onto the board, but I'm not, not very clear. <laughs> I'm not very clear of the capacity right. of what I can accomplish through the board and the municipality at this point. Dennis, so, but your, Dennis, your commitment to the village and your experience here, I've seen firsthand is extraordinary and anything that you could provide will be helpful. And that's from personal experience with ongoing different biz, uh, transactions, which is much appreciated, Dennis. Thank and I you. second that because I've worked with Dennis through you're, real you're, estate. You're a constant terrific. professional. Thank He's you. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I have a thought, Tony. Maybe, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could petition to have a regular meeting with the village uh, manager or and or the village, you know, the, the right people. And this way, you know, maybe maybe if you can make something formal, a monthly meeting yourself. A by um, a month, a two months, you know, and may, maybe then you could, uh, you know, have a more formal uh, communication with, you know, with the mayor, with the, you know, with, with the head. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the whole group. Yeah, just just Tony, just have a regular meeting, try to schedule sure. a regular meeting. All right, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Uh, there, there, is there anybody else who is not spoken that wishes to speak? I, I see Kelly's hand is back up and Bernie's hand is back up. Tim O'Connor, you're on. Jen, uh, Jimmy Abadi. Uh, James, I'm not seeing his hand up yet, so just bear with me. Okay, good. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Perfect. Uh, Tim O'Connor, Washington Street. Um, it's so heartfelt that uh, you know that the board is not communicating back to the public yet, uh, letting us know what's going on with the Army Corps of Engineers project. Uh, what's an acceptable is that you know the core is waiting for 60 percent of the design work then to let the public know that should be right out of the gate you know we got technology here at a minimum these meetings could be recorded and added to the village website for people to look at at a minimum um it's crazy that we work in these days but um from uh, your standpoint from the fmac standpoint what other projects are can we look at or implement uh, in parallel to the ACE? That goes oh. to the low hanging fruits, Tony. Right, well, hang on. So Tim, I'm glad you brought that up because as you may have seen, our agenda is extremely long tonight. So um, we wanted to briefly touch on two other areas that I can, and one of them was street and the similar problems, street flooding in both Washingtonville the industrial area as kind of one of the areas. And the second is street flooding in the Florence Park area. And both the Washingtonville and Florence sent me emails with, I would say probably signed sign petition of like 50 people at least, something like that. So I was at the board meeting or the work session last Monday night and Dan, brought up a, what I thought was a good approach, which was then I would say seconded by the mayor and the, and the board that we hire an engineer to look at the street flooding. And we had originally discussed just Washingtonville and then maybe expanding it. So I think that, and I was planning to go back to the next work session to say that I'd like to look at the, the Washington area, the industrial area. And in fact, I circulated a scope of work, a draft, which got put on the, put on the village website today, I think. So, and then I think Dan, the, the board approved money for that study, correct? At the board, the board of trustees, after I suggested it was, has approved $150,000 for uh, not just to study, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm not interested in another dust collector. Uh, we're great on that. We're great on those. I'm not interested in that, but a study with with specific implementation plans and paths forwards for implementation on uh, the flooding issues, uh, and the the area is from the I-95 
or pass on Mamarnock Avenue to, to at least Fenimore Road and maybe further uh, into the industrial area and from the Mamarnock and Sheldrake Rivers over to I-95. So that the, basically our low-lying low lowing areas, most of those streets do not have drainage except at the intersections and do not have enough pitch to run the water to the intersections. Uh, so that is part of the part of the issue to try and attack uh, <clears throat> flooding, not only for to help in parallel with the Army Corps of Engineers plan, but more importantly for those non-episodic storms where we get flooding as well. Uh, so I, the the concept is to do a twofold approach to life. Uh, and Tony and Dan, I would think Tim also wants to hear is the low hanging fruits that we already have. We have a VAT truck. We finally have a VAT truck. Flood right, mitigation so, Andrew, Andrew, more. Andrew, 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 just give me one more minute because I want to I want to talk about. So Florence Park area residents also sent an email. So Dan, I'd like to, and committee, I'd like to try to do a similar approach to that area as we're doing, Dan, for the Washingtonville and industrial area. So I would like just to ask the members, would you support that, an effort similar to what Dan just described in Washingtonville and, and well, industrial can all, area? Can that all be looked at under the same $150,000 umbrella that's been, that's been funded? I, I, I think, think we would need additional monies to do that very candidly, and I'm all for doing that. I think we should. But I think the first step is to review what's already been studied in the Florence Park area, if you will. Or it's actually, wasn't it done in 1984 or something, Dan? It's no longer going to be valid. No, but what they're what the trouble spots that they have pointed up, you know, would be still valid. They, they didn't disappear. They only got worse. So that's part of what we... But if they're worse, then the, the engineers would have to determine how to fix it. Proper. That's exactly. On 2022 standards, not on 1984 standards. Yeah. So, so I guess, I don't, do I have, do I have kind of a, I have, I see Peg is, so yep. my, I have, I'd like to have FMAC just, I know Peg, you're saying yes. Absolutely. I'd like to add the Florence Park area to uh, at least put before the BLT for an engineering study of options there. I would second that, absolutely. Definitely. But Elena, yep. Stephen, yes. Any nays? Yes. No nays. Okay, great. Okay. Um, do you so, have Jimmy uh, Abadi who would like hold to- Hold on, let's, let's finish wait, this wait, 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 We're wait, not wait, done wait. with this thought. But wait, Tony, if we can go back- Yes, to, all right, so Andrew, you're right. There are more issues of low-hanging fruit. About through. what we can do in conjunction to Army Corps. We have it right in front of us, whether it's the VAC truck, maintaining the infrastructure that we have now- and Road to nowhere. Uh, road to nowhere, clearing debris under the underpasses before storms. Yeah. We used to do it 72 hours, 48 hours, 24 hours out. There was a list of things that could be done. And bridging because the mountain by Grove Street so that is in, essence, in the river is frightening. And we essence, have asked this and asked this and we're getting no answers. In essence, there's a tremendous number. Tim, that's a great question. There's a tremendous amount of things that we coin as low hanging fruits that we can do today. In fact, I saw that truck on Fendamore and Hoyt today. They were doing an incredible job. It was great seeing this. It was refreshing to see. These are things that we can do today. So you're absolutely right in conjunction to the Army Corps, what we as a village can do on for ourselves to help ourselves. Good question though. Okay, yeah, thank you, Tim. All right, well, how about one more, Dan? And then we age, to move. Tony, I think yes. you need to go back to the low-hanging fruit memo that we put together. And that entire thing, in addition to the request for Florence Park, needs to go back to the Board of Trustees and the Village Manager's Office. All right, I will try to, to do that on the next work session. J Jimmy Abadi has had his hand up for a while. Uh, if you want one more. I yeah, one more, to... one more. Yeah, Lou, Lou Young is also. Okay. Uh, um... You're on, Jimmy. Hold it, what happened? No, he's not, I don't see him. I don't see him at all. He's on the right side still. He's above B. So it's just, just me, okay. Hold on, hold on. We have a little technical trouble here. Here we go. There he is. There he is. Okay, Jimmy. 
No, it's not working. Hold on a minute. Yeah, uh, Lou is on. You you promoted Lou. Trustee Young, just go on mute. Take the mute off. Mr. Young, you're on mute. All right, so I guess- Is there a way to get back to uh, Jimmy Abate? No, the, the computer is saying Jimmy can't talk because he's using an older version of Zoom and it's not compatible. Uh, I'm sorry about that, uh, you, Jimmy. I don't know how to- uh, may, may I make a suggestion? Hold, 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 just let, let me do this. Let me promote him and then we can demote him afterwards. <laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy. Can, are you on? Yep, can see him. Can, there Jimmy, he is. Jimmy, unmute yourself. Now I can, are you there? Yep. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, my name is Jimmy Abadi. Listen, guys. Um, all right. So I know you guys are trying to do the right thing. We're very frustrated to hear maybes and and uh, but and and you know at this stage, I'm still like everybody else in Mamaroneck is still rebuilding and it's 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 March. Um, Andrew, you said something good. With my wife wrote a big email out about cleaning up and doing something until we can get the Army Corps engineer to do their job. But I got to say, I need you guys as what good is having the mitigation advisory committee if there's no communication? And I'm, and I'm very frustrated, and I just want you guys to hear me. You know, we're talking about marijuana stores. We're talking about um, the, the, the affordable housing. We're talking about uh, refrigerator. Listen, all of that is great. We, we got the biggest problem here is flooding in Mamaroneck, and we're getting destroyed as a community. I don't mm -hmm. want to hear it no more, and I'm sure everybody here does not want to hear about any of that other stuff. The mayor, with all due respect, the only thing that should be coming out of his mouth is how we're going to correct this. And if he's not speaking to the mitigation committee, which is a flood committee, uh, committee this makes no sense. And I guess what I'm asking you guys is somebody's got to be more aggressive. They don't have a right to go into a meeting and not address it with the mitigation committee. You guys are supposed to be able to sit down and advise each other what's going on, what can we do to make the village better so we don't flood so bad, okay? In the meantime, nobody's even called into the meeting or even asked their opinion. Or even told the meeting happened. Well, that's the problem here. And the main problem, and I'm going to say it, the mayor may not like it, it's coming from him and Jerry, because that, to me, is being sneaky. I don't care what you tell me. They need to speak to you guys and say, hey, listen, we're going to be sitting with the Army Corps of Engineers. Have you guys discussed anything? Do you guys have any input? What good is having a committee if you're not going to give them the input? You might as well just put duct tape on your mouth. I'm, I'm frustrated. I know everybody that lives in Mamaroneck, especially in the flats, Okay, that got destroyed. I lived on Elliott Avenue. This is my fourth or fifth flood. I don't even remember anymore. Um, this is the worst one. Um, I'm just frustrated. And I, and I and the only thing I do want to say is somebody's got to take the incentive to go and say, hey, we need to be in these meetings. Somebody's got to tell the mayor and, 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 um, and Jerry that this can't happen again. You can't, you can't go into a meeting and not advise the, the committee a flood mitigation advisory committee. It doesn't this, make any sense. This is a democracy and it's not being run as a democracy right now. Well, and, and I understand it, but we as the taxpayers in this village that got, everyone got destroyed and lost tons of money, tons of personal things, luckily no life, thank God, okay? But the point is, what are we doing here in the village of Mamaroneck? I don't even know what's going on here myself. I listened to a meeting last week where the mayor and everybody was fighting and the mayor was getting defensive. The only thing that should be coming out of the mouth of the mayor is how are we going to fix Mamaroneck? How are we going to take care of this flood problem? It may flood again. Okay. And I'm sure it's going to, what can we do to make it better? What can we do right now to make it better? I don't want to hear about August or six months from now, the army Corps engineer, because Andrew, 
I went through this with you several years ago. I brought pictures. I said, listen, guys, look at this. This is going to happen again. Yeah, I mean, in 2017, worse. we brought it home, and we have yes. to do it again. We brought yes. it home through cooperation, transparency, and participation. We're going to bring it home again. We agree but with it's, you, it's, Jimmy. It's March. Let me, let me just say, it's March. Okay? It's seven months later, and we're just even talking about I haven't heard or, or even seen the mayor come around about the floods. And I'm sorry. No disrespect. But this is the biggest problem of the village of Mamaronic, and this both. has to stop. Both, right, Jim, so, both, so both the and businesses so, alike. You're absolutely we need, right. We need your help. So, so, we need your help. Somebody in your committee has to go to the mayor and to Jerry and say, hey, you guys can't do this. You got you, – what, what, what good is having a committee? You might as well just disregard the committee. Tony, we stand behind you. Steven, we agree. Dana, Peggy, Elsa, we stand behind you. All right, we're here. So I, well, okay. I, to, I, so I said I wanted to be positive. Tonight. Well, that is very positive, Tony. And that, yeah. uh, just and I'm not. I'm uh, Jimmy. I'm listening. Believe me. Okay. And I've been I've been trying to be front and center with those two individuals, and I've made a little bit of progress. I think we need a huge amount more progress. And like I said, I'm so glad that people showed up tonight, including you, because if you, it's it's very important. I mean, we got eighty-eight million dollars, so let's use it, right? And, and yeah, and in the meantime, let's let's like I got to tell you, um, a few people came down and and they took a walk, and we looked at the brooks. And if you look at what's going on around here, all the debris and everything, nobody's even cleaned up yet since the flood. It's disgusting. Jimmy, and that's we, thing. Have, we have been asking since September for the village to do this. We are being ignored. Right, and I, Jimmy, well, I I went around took pictures of, of, of the, I sent it around to our committee. I sent it to the village of, of almost every piece of debris from Fenimore Road all the way up to the Thruway Bridge, right? And so we, I, thank you for being here tonight. That's all I'm going to so, say. So Jimmy, so one more thing, and I know you got a lot of people, if you go and take a look at the homes, there's still tons of debris that was underwater that's contaminated out and about in our village, just laying out. Nobody's even cleaned it up. Now they did, listen, don't get me wrong. The village did a great job of taking the stuff that was thrown up, but there's still a lot of stuff that's left out in people's yards or whatever it may be. The brooks are filthy. I mean, you know, they got to do something. Jimmy, I'm not sure if you heard that uh, Dennis of the village is hopefully going to be working with us. Uh, also as a caveat of information back to the municipality which will be hopefully very helpful. Again, he's the, he's the constant professional. And I'm sure if he's given the opportunity to do so, things like that. And I agree. These are, these are things that can be done tomorrow. We don't have we to don't. wait for $88 million for that. You're absolutely Andrew, the right. only thing I want to say, I'm going to shut up now. No, we, we, need like, someone, we, we need someone that's going to be aggressive. No more. We don't want to hear it anymore. We need Here aggressiveness. We need someone that cares about the village, that cares about the taxpayers, that cares about the public, that went through all of this. We all went through it together. We need a yeah, shoulder to shoulder, Jimmy. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank I, I you. just have to say something here, please. Um, I'm very disturbed at the fact that we are pointing fingers and the other parties are not here. So I totally agree with Jimmy. We, as a committee, the advisory committee should be more aggressive. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, we are here to represent the public, to express the public opinion, and we have to be more aggressive. We have to be on top of this. We have to, if if we if we they say no, we have to we have to keep insistent. So, uh, I think. We have to be more aggressive. We have to be more proactive, and we don't have to take no for an answer. And Thank you. we have Thank to you. stop blaming others and do our part ourselves. Thank you, Elsa. Hello, Chair Board. If I may, this is Dennis Drogan again. So, uh, just remark to what Jimmy was asking for was um, somebody to walk the river. Um, there are there is debris around. I know the village did put a, a great amount of time and effort into uh, immediating and cleaning up the stream and the Mamaroneck River. Um, 
I'll go out and take a look in my time and uh, see what I can put together and maybe make a list. If the committee and all the attendees can email me locations of stuff, Dennis, you know, we can, we can if read I may, through. I will meet you and take you on a river walk. And Dennis, I will send you my PowerPoint with the pictures of all the stuff I took that you know, from Fenimore Road up to up to 95, okay? Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, Dennis, even, I would be happy to take you in, on a river walk and show you what we're talking about. May I come on that river walk as well? You bet. <laughs> that's terrific. All right, sure. I finally figured out how to un unmute my phone. Absolutely, Lou. <laughs> um, uh, um, can I uh, just uh, m make an observation here? Sure. Yeah, uh, a lot of this stuff, I mean, you talked about Florence Park. I have I have uh, um, documents from Florence Park that go back to 1981, and uh, and and the flooding in Washingtonville that back that far as well. So none of this uh, is new, and um, and I would say that anybody who's been studying or sitting on committees for all those years since, you know, in, and and the mayor too. Yeah, somebody said the mayor should do this too, but they everybody and including Andrew should uh, just say. We're sorry we didn't do more. We're going to do better now. And that's, the, that's what we have to do going forward because it hasn't been addressed. This has been horribly neglected. We have a, 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 a river maintenance uh, program that has funds in it that hasn't been used. And it was created eight years ago by the, uh, at the suggestion of the Army Corps. They never spent the money and they raided it uh, three years ago. The Board of Trustees raided it. And, uh, and that's, that's the truth. They haven't spent it. So it, when we go on that river walk, you point it out and we'll go get the stuff. And I want to tell um, Trustee Natchez also, yes, Trustee Natchez did bring up about the, um, the study or the, the engineering uh, 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 contract for uh, the flats uh, and, and, and Washingtonville, but uh, he didn't vote for it because he didn't want the money to come out of the sewer program. He wanted it to come out of affordable housing. So the vote was four to one Trustee Natchez voted against it. So I just want to clear well, that. This, this, is, this is not the time for politics. You want to yeah, be. Exactly. It's not politics. I'm just You're correcting just, just something you said that isn't true. Gentlemen, respectfully, respectfully, there's 30 people that want to be heard this evening. This is yeah. not the time to debate. There'll be another I'm, time I'm for just, that. I'm just correcting this is not the time that to was debate. not true. Re not and respectfully, true. you want to know something? The fine individuals who they're not elected. These are volunteers on this flood mitigation advisory committee. These are the individuals who take time from their families, from their lives to give back to the community that's so great to them, Trustee Young. And respectfully, these individuals are doing everything they can in their power. It's our elected officials of whom you're one of them, okay, that we expect to lead the charge. When people are talking about what's being done the communication, the transfer of, and dissemination of, of, of information. We expect that from our elected officials. We're mere volunteers, Trustee Young. And furthermore, with regards to the past, I ask you on September 1st, why was our VAC truck being maintained, not in service? And why didn't we contact the contractor to go to the Washingtonville, the industrial area and the heights to clean out the storm drains that we knew are problematic, okay? so. Some of us were emailing and begging and pleading with the village to do that. So respectfully, these are hard working individuals that are selflessly giving back to the community. And I think they're doing a pretty good job. Okay, let's, let's, let's I agree, let's stop the politics. Let's, let's get back on positive things we can do. Um, I would like to move on to the other parts of the agenda. Okay. okay. Um, Okay, and for those, again, thank you. So let's keep going. So I'm, I'm gonna go to something completely, uh, Bay, I see you're on. So um, thank you for showing up. Thank you for sending me that Florence Park email. And I will be hopefully before the trustees next, at their next work session, promoting uh, an engineer to study the Florence Park area and come up with solutions, okay? So I'd like to go to Catherine Dejas next. Catherine, can you, uh, uh, Dan, can you promote Catherine Dejas, please? And this has to do with um, River Clean Out, which is another volunteer effort. And I'm pretty sure Catherine is, 
is is either spearheading it or she she asked to talk about it. So I, I want to give her a few minutes. I'm trying to find it. Okay. D E H A I S. I can't find her. Has she uh, she needs to raise her hand for. Okay, for can you, Catherine? Can you raise your hand, please? Here we go. You should be able to talk now, Catherine. Catherine, you have to unmute yourself. Hi, right. Daryl. Okay, um, I'll just speak very, very briefly. Um, you know, our, our, I'm on the environmental committee, and of course, our committee is concerned about, um, you know, the debris in the, in the river and also litter. Um, so we're doing two things that relate to you. One is we're starting an initiative for um, uh, doing better litter uh, litter pickup in the village. Um, you know, we're uh, gonna go away to get more um, garbage receptacles to get more regular pickup of those garbage receptacles and so forth. So we're, we're putting together a, a litter initiative that's early days on that. Um, the second thing is we have a, um, a twice a year, our committee does um, uh, cleanups in the village. Um, that will be happening on um, Saturday, May 7th. And, um, we, you know, I know you, you have participated in the past. Um, you know, we send out teams to each of, to all the different parks. And we're going to be focusing more on the streams um, this year. So um, I would welcome uh, if any of you on the committee or anyone else in the community that can hear me uh, wants to participate, uh, please sign up for that. And if you would like to be a team leader in a specific area, for example, um, the, the walkway along Bub Walker Park to the community garden there um, is, is, has, has an enormous amount of litter in it along the river uh, riverway. Uh, we would definitely appreciate um, leadership in each of these areas. Um, and um, in, I think it's a, an informal process, um, but maybe with Dennis, it can become more formalized, whereby um, along with pictures of litter, um, I have also sent pictures of a gar large garbage and so forth that I've seen in the river. Um, and those have been um, forwarded by Jerry uh, Barbiero, to the um, harbor master, uh, Jeff, um, I can't really think of his last name, but anyway, the harbor master, they've been renting um, uh, cranes and, um, and have um, been removing large pieces of junk. So um, I'm sure Dennis can connect to that. So that's, um, that's all I have to Catherine, offer. If I, if I could just jump in for a second, if you sure. don't mind. Because um, we've been doing these river cleanups for many, many years, and I right. applaud the effort, but I've always suggested that April and May are too early to do them because you're still getting the heavy spring rains and the level of the rivers are high. Right. It would probably be more efficient to do one later in the summer when the river is much lower. Right. Well, this is our regular spring cleanup. I know it is, but maybe, we should, but maybe so we should think about doing another yeah. one okay. when the river yeah. is really low because that's it's a good idea get into it to make to get garbage okay um because right now you know it's more about the area that's you know you can't get down into the river and but, that but, not but even you be can't get into safe. a lot of the banks because the river is higher than it would be at other points in the year yeah well you know just from being out there just last time. week i think there's a lot that can be done um in in may in a month so, but then we, you know, I'll bring it to the committee that maybe we should have a third day like that. So this is a community-wide effort that everybody yep. knows about. And um, so please, um, um, maybe, um, I'm not sure how to, you guys can communicate with me. I have a Village of Mamaroneck email, but anybody on your committee or community leaders, like for example, Jim Abadi and people like that, who would like to be team leaders in different areas, as part of this cleanup on May 7th, we would welcome your participation. And so Catherine, I would also suggest reaching out to the various uh, neighborhood associations, Sure Acres okay. or OPA uh, and the Heights. There's so many different uh, neighborhood organizations in the uh, community that would okay. be more than happy to assist. I would encourage Thank you to Thank you do very that. much. Kate, is there, is there a link on the Village of website 
that people can look at the event and maybe sign uh, there up? There should be. Um, I, I haven't actually checked, but um, I know there was uh, in the fall for the fall cleanup. There should be a sign up sheet there. And as far as being a team leader, they can uh, con communicate with me, um, sending me an email through the village. All right. See if you can get. I mean, our we have a, a person in the village, Cliff, whose name last name I don't yeah. remember. Um, yeah. And, but I'm not going to speak. I'm sure it's if it's not up there yet, it will be shortly. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, I think that's important. Okay. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about the um, uh, regulations. Okay, let me just look through my agenda here to see. Yeah, Chair, know. Chair, there's yes. four other hands up on the right. I don't know if that's related to the topic or if we're moving on to the next, but you have four. You have Tim, Lani, Mindy, Ann, and Sandabel. So I see four people on my screen, but I don't know. If I and do I, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I said there's four other people that have their hands up or three oh, now. Right, I so, wasn't sure if they wanted to add on to the ACE. Right, so, so I, right. And I see I say now see Bea. So Dan, uh, let Bea, Bea, Bea was put together that whole email. So can you let Bea promote Bea to a speaking uh, role? Bea is on it. Sir Soli is, is on, uh, Tony. Hi, thank you for, for listening to me. First of all, I will also keep it uh, positive. Um, Mr. Gilbert, because I appreciate the, the committee uh, agreeing to bring to the Board of Trustees the inclusion of Florence Park Avenue in the uh, engineering study. Uh, that, that definitely is a positive. I think it's funny that um, Mr. Spatz said this was an old issue and I'm listed under old business. Um, and we also don't want another study that's a dust collector because there have been many studies. 1982 was a sanitary sewer study. There was a study in 2006. We have culverts running through the backyards of the people on Florence Street and Jensen Avenue. We don't know when that was put in. We don't know what shape it's in. So there's a lot to be investigated, but I, I'm confident I'm, and I'm happy to know that this is going to be hopefully a first step um, in, in, in reducing the flooding in our yards, in our basements, in our garages, um, because it has been an ongoing issue for many, many years. Uh, so I thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay, well, you're welcome. Thanks for thanks for taking the effort and reaching out. Tony, Tony, if I can just for a second, I never said that this was an old issue, FYI, or a study that would be on a um, bookshelf or collect dust, uh, dust. I'm very much in support of, and as the committee is, to expanding that study. So I think it's very important. There's nothing new when it comes to flooding because it's something that needs to be addressed today. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, um, I see Lou, you still have your hand up. Do you, uh, are you desperate to say something else or you, you can you, good. <laughs> no, I just left it up, sorry, <laughs> go on. Trying to confuse me again, okay. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm confused, it's okay. Right. <laughs> there you go. You have two okay. hands up, you have Lilani and Mindy. All right, two more. Who? Miss Reed and, and Mindy, there's two. And Bernie. Mm. Lilani, you're on. Thank you. Um, I almost just lowered my hand because I felt that um, if, it, if I did say something that it would just be joining in in the banter that has been going on. Um, but I think one, I think the um, this committee, this committee that has been a you know, meeting for several years and doing this work on flood mitigation, it is very important um, considering that I know my family, since we moved on Hillside, have experienced floods since the 80s um, in one way or another. So I completely understand. I agree with Mr. Um, Abadi in his comments. Um, I agree, or I, 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 and I agree with Lou in what he says. I just, I think that moving forward and Elsa, most importantly, what Elsa said in terms of moving forward, it is everybody's responsibility, it's my responsibility, it's it's the whole town's responsibility um, to make sure that we ensure that these things keep moving. Um, and that's what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and point fingers because um, that's, that's not the purpose. You guys have done enough of that. Um, but rather than just say that, granted this may have been my first meeting, but this is not my first rodeo when it comes down to 
helping, um, dealing with the flood and helping my community. And maybe the reason why so many people have not joined in the meeting is because flooding is a traumatic experience. It's a, it's a huge loss on so many different levels. And if people haven't been joining, maybe they're just still trying to recover. And I just may be thinking about that because it's an, it, it takes, it takes all of you, it takes all, all of, all of a person, mind, body, and soul to deal with the aftermath of a flood and not too many people, not everybody has the resources to bounce back. So I'm done. Thank you. And thank, everybody. thank you, Leilani. Okay. The Leilani. Last one, Eddie. Leilani. Leilani. Sorry. Guys and read. <laughs> and Eddie is now on. And you have to unmute yourself. And you need to unmute yourself. Bottom left. Oh, there she goes. Oh, she got it. Hi, Ann. Go ahead, Ann. You're on. All right, Ann, we cannot hear you. You have one more hand up, Tony's uh, Mindy. Dan, okay, Mindy. Min Mindy is the last one. Yeah. Okay. Min yeah. Hi, Mindy. Yeah. Hi there. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, having this meeting and letting us speak. I'm uh, calling from Elliott Avenue. And um, I've been listening. This is the first time in the meeting here. And uh, Lilani, you've really touched my heart because it is traumatic. And thank you for saying that and talking for the people, not just for we want results, but you know, surviving this flood and getting through it and still working every day to try to rebuild is, uh, is traumatic. It's hard. And um, I hear that you guys are complaining or not having the information. And how do you get the information? What I'm not hearing is really what we can do, okay? We, we're not getting the information. We're not invited to the meetings. Uh, the committee is not involved as it should be. Okay, so what is the action item that we need to do now in order to make that happen? Uh, he said become more aggressive, but who can become more aggressive? And what plan can we do together to actually reach out to those people who are in charge and can get us into these meetings and can hear us? What can we do? Uh, not other than complain about it. I mean, there has to be some way that, that we can make sure that it, we don't get bypassed. Um, that's one. So I would really like to see maybe as a team together tonight, we can talk about community action to make our voices heard, not just to the committee, but make the committee's voice a little bit stronger to the leaders out there. That's one of the things that has been coming up for me. Another thing that came up for me is the plan. Um, uh, this is my first time in the meeting, so if I understand correctly, the plan from the Army Corps is the old plan, uh, and, and they're now doing the, a design of it, and you mentioned a few areas that they're going to focus on up until 60%. So that means that we're only going to get 60% of the design work by August. Meanwhile, in the two weeks, it's April, and the rainy season starts. <laughs> you know, we have a whole summer of hurricanes through September, and it's kind of scary right now. Uh, as uh, we're re rebuilding our home on, on not just the plans, but what kind of action can we take now? Because I'm afraid, really afraid, because the rain's gonna start. You know, it started raining this week. I don't know how many of you felt it, but we Every know day. that. Every time. You know, we're looking at that. Uh, it's scary. So, Mindy, um, just so you'll know, many of us on this committee have flooded extensively. So we understand your pain. Yeah, I, I know here. that. I know that. Um, so I, 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 think I think it's that, important. I don't know if the city understands the pain so much because it is traumatic, like Lelani said. It's really traumatic, and there's not enough action. There's not enough action. We agree. Uh, yep. Mindy. And so what? What can we do? Let's let's take a few Mindy. minutes. Maybe you guys can take a few it's, minutes to discuss what can we do today. Mindy, it's funny what you said. We, we a couple minutes ago, um, I shared back in 2017. We had a seat at the table. Not only did we see it at the table here with the Army Corps, state, county representatives here in the village, but we went to the city. We went to the federal government. 
in New York City. We also traveled to Washington. So what it illustrates, Mindy, it's been done and we can do it again. And we have to lean on our elected officials locally to open up that door, to encourage the communication and not by brute force, but they should want to, as our elected officials, they should want and have the desire to communicate and bring us to the table. And I encourage that because it worked in 2017 and it can work again. And so thanks you're suggesting to people like that we yourself. all turn directly to the, to the mayor, like let's write letters now to the mayor. And our elected our officials, voices. absolutely. I would, I would write emails to the board of trustees and the village manager. Okay, very good. So I, I say everyone on this call, you said there's 30 people on the call. So, no, yeah. let's start to take a little bit of action as summer. a group to put pressure uh, because we need, some, we need something done. You know, it's hard to sleep at night. You're and right. uh, we know something that Jimmy said, I think Jimmy, Jimmy Abadi, mm -hmm. he's a neighbor. Um, he mentioned about the debris, that there's debris also in uh, the yards of people's homes. Uh, um, if, as far as I understand it, the city is no longer collecting flood debris and construction debris. And I, and I think Dennis is going to bring that back. He's going to communicate that back to the municipality. So as perhaps, a, perhaps some photographs could be taken and sent to the committee and we can pass them on to Dennis so that we okay. can- That would help us a lot because it's tremendously about. expensive to get this stuff taken away. And we have to, you know, we have to build walls. <laughs> You know, change electrical wires and to be getting rid of debris, paying hundreds Absolutely, of dollars to Mindy. get rid of debris. I mean, Excuse I'd rather leave me, it in my may, yard. Mindy? Yeah. May I know your last name, please? Stern, Mindy Stern. Thank you. You're, thank you're you. an so Elsa thank, thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> thank you for participating. Thank Absolutely, you. Elsa. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So, I think this has been really positive. And again, I really thank everybody for participating tonight. And there have been some, some suggestions on how you can take further action. Our next meeting is in April. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Well, Tony, we had some other things on the agenda. Yeah, I'm not closing out. I'm just thanking people okay. for the participation. Okay. Um, I guess one other thing before we move on to regulations. Uh, Tony, do you have that date certain? Do we have that date certain for the next meeting in April? It's the fourth um, Tuesday. Okay, just want to make sure because there's a spring break. A lot of people going away for Easter, Passover, holidays, spring break. Great. I've got it as the 26th. Great, awesome. 426, so April 26th, Peg? That's what I've got. Right, and I think according to our governor, after the 15th, we can have in-person meetings. So that might be a positive step also, okay? Um, before we go on to regulations though, I want to bring up floatables, right? And Stephen, Glenn, or you went around the village um, to take some look at that. And we had talked about that floatables, meaning stuff that can float away and not really debris, but in Ida, under the, under the uh, station plaza bridge, right? A trailer truck got stuck, I guess, and, a, a, uh, and a shed, right? And then one of them somehow went downstream and got stuck on another bridge. So, you need a main bridge. Right. So, Dennis, if you're still on, maybe you, Stephen, can you hook up with Dennis and share your pictures with him? Because these floatables, it, it, you know, I mean, we could we could spend $88 million and then a, a, the floatable could come in and just ruin the project again. So I think this is a key, you could almost call this low-hanging fruit, right? Because we went around the village and find everything that can float and either, I don't know how we get rid of it or how we tie it down, but I think I think this could be a big help in the near future. There was also, if I may, an email um, a couple of weeks ago from Gina Van Eyf about a shed that had been taken out of the river and was put somewhere by North Shore Farms behind there by the river. And it's just sitting there and it, it was never removed. So Dennis, that might be something to look into as well. Yeah, so, I, yeah, so because we even if we got a foot or two of water, not seven feet of water, one of those floatables gets stuck under the bridge again, we're right back to where we started, just what everyone is concerned about. So I think floatables, we, 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 can, we can take some 
clear action on floatables in a short period. So Dennis, can you work with Stephen on that, please? I can, I, I can to a degree. Yeah, I know um, you, you can't solve it, but at least maybe, you know, we could figure out what, what you know, what are the low hanging fruit on, fruit on the floatables? You know, what's gonna float first? Or I, I don't know how we do it, but um, is that all right with you, Stephen? Sure, Dennis, I'll send those over to you. Um, is your, I just would need your communication, I mean, your email or something. I'm all over the website. Okay, uh, I'll find you. So Dennis, if you send, Dennis, send me your, send me your e a note and then I'll circulate it. I'll send this way, you'll have all of our emails, okay? Okay, um, if I may talk quickly about the, what floatables are, right? Um, when we have, um, when I've walked around the village and we've determined what is a problem, um, we have an issue inside people's yards. You know, it's, it's not an issue because our code permits people to have sheds, um, you know, one by 20, uh, 120 square feet. Um, you know, they can have construction materials. They can have all of this stuff uh, near, on, close to the river on their property. So, um, you know, unless something is, is passed administratively, um, perhaps the trustee is a change in our zoning code that would give the building department the ability to um, act on these, these floatables or items that could be washed away. Um, you know, I would say there's probably 24, two dozen to three dozen trampolines that were swallowed up by the Mamaroneck River. Uh, the shed that was that was stated that was yanked out of the river, it actually floated to that location right. by North Shore Farms. Um, you know, there was uh, the leaning tower of coolers in the Mamaroneck River. Anything and everything that can possibly go went. Um, I once had a refrigerator that floated down the river. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's Dennis. Tough. Just so you know, the, the the things I was I I was more concerned with, and I took pictures of, with with just like the tra the trailers. And most of them were in the um, were in the industrial section of Mamaroneck. So um, I don't know necessarily what the regulation is on that, but I mean, I really didn't look at you know you know little um, sheds in the backyards or anything. And uh, so I don't know you know so you know this just to give you a preview of what, of what we're, we're talking about, at least what I was observing. De Dennis okay. also should know that uh, the DEC allow those types of things in the regulated floodway. So that we had, uh, which tr which actually trumps the village uh, zoning that would allow it. So that's something that uh, is very serious uh, to, you know, to put in your uh, arsenal of uh, things to uh, take care what of. What I would suggest is um, Steve, Dennis, uh, Tony, or whomever, we convening, because again, we have a long agenda. This is obviously something that needs to be addressed um, and it's important. And we all are in agreement. So I think we could definitely take this offline and, and kind of arrive at a way to best approach it. But it's something that is manageable. All right. So, yeah, I wanted to put it on though, because I think we can should Perfect. consider it low hanging fruit because there's definitely stuff we can do. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks again, Dennis. Um, okay. So I want to just talk about regulations for a few minutes. And I don't want this meeting to go on all night, but um, Peg did a bunch of work on putting together um, some summaries of regulations. I wanted to start with um, the, what I'm gonna say is health and safety. And- Tony, if is, I may, why don't you give some background for the people who are listening? Cause they're not aware of what we're talking about. Okay. And so right now in the floodplain, we have what we call floodplain development, right? And some of the problems with floodplain development is you know health and safety. Can residents get out? Should we add residents? Should we add square footage to the floodplain, to residents in the floodplain? And so there's been a couple of approaches to, to this problem. And one of the approaches is simply that the regulations that we have need to be followed and enforced, right? Then there was discussion of a, of a, 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 a hiatus on building or developing in the floodplain, which I really don't want to go near, but I think following the existing regulations, almost to the letter of the law, at least for now, before the Army Corps project takes, takes place, is, is, is critical. And um, there is a current application, at least one or maybe more, in the floodplain. And FMAC, our committee, 
will, is, is not a regulatory land use committee, but we, we can give input into the other committees. And so, um, Peg, can you, can you, would you yes. just summarize kind of the regulations and so, what the process needs to be? So and this is for the benefit of our committee as well as everyone else. Um, if a, a package is coming from the building department and going to planning, if a property is located in the flood zone or the floodway, the following needs to be included with the building department's packet. Um, a complete short environmental assessment form, two copies of a property survey, a floodplain development permit, which includes a wetland activity permit if in a tidal wetland or buffer, or if it's in fresh water wetland, um, a wetland activity permit, base flood elevation certificate, proposed elevation of the lowest floor if it's a residence, proposed elevation to which the building will be flood proofed if it's non-residential. And this came from the DEC. Any development partially or totally within the regulatory floodway must have an encroachment analysis, parentheses or no rise analysis, completed by a professional engineer, which shows no rise when compared to pre and post conditions which to me is one of the examples of that is a HECRAS study. So when a, an application comes before the planning board, if that property is in the flood zone or floodway, each of those criteria need to be met. So we were sent an application that the committee has received on 572 Van Rant's place, um, so but Peg, these Peg. documents were not included. Yeah, okay, so Peg, we and we had a request that not to hear the Van Vance thing tonight. We're not hearing it because we're not a land use committee. Um, and but we're Dan, still supposed to opine. Yeah. So Dan Dan responded to that request, and I think properly. Um, Dan, do you want to just elucidate that response briefly? Yeah, that, but, uh, I'm happy to do that. But before I do, I want to suggest to uh, Dan. Uh, 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 I want to suggest that the uh, short form environmental form that is on the uh, <clears throat> on the village website in terms of the um, building department should actually be the one the, the forms from the DEC, which can be done online, but they will identify what the DEC has already mapped um, in terms of regulated areas from their vantage point. Uh, which takes a lot of the guesswork out of uh, the building department having to try and do that or an applicant trying to do that. Uh, and it's very simple to do. All you have to do is give them the link. Uh, in terms of there was a request from the, or, or uh, an email from the um, applicant saying that they were concerned that this was a hearing and they were not notified. Uh, the FMAC is not a land use board and does not have quote hearings, they can, uh, they've asked to receive applications to review them and give recommendations if they so choose good, better and different uh, to any of the land use committees. The applicant is asked to appear before that. And I've said that's up to the chair to communicate, you know, uh, directly with them on that. Um, you know, but uh, it is not a regulatory matter. It is a a discussion in terms of what the FMAC's charge is, which is flooding and anything that has to do with that is something that they should, you know, be reviewing and commenting on if they feel that it's necessary. But they do not have the role as a land use committee uh, to actually hold a hearing and make a judgment. They will get, they can give recommendations and holding that in a, in a public forum, in a meeting forum, is a very desirable approach for transparency and discussion of flood issues. Here, I would suggest uh, I am in receipt, as well as every member of our committee, of the email from um, the applicant's legal counsel. And I would encourage us to, I believe for transparency purposes, to incorporate and include the applicant if they're on this evening. And if not, to allow that opportunity for them to participate because we may have questions that we don't have in front of us. In addition to members of the community that are participating in the call or in the Zoom this evening, 
to also be able to vet uh, questions. So I think that for full transparency, I do think it's absolutely imperative to have the applicant present. Whether or not we're opining or not, it, I just it's troubling if we just render opinions without an applicant's input and our opportunity to um, uh, ask questions. So I think that it just it balances it out uh, if, if they're available. I'm going to say Andrew, I, I would I'd like to suggest that you'd say I would say they should, should be invited, but it's their decision as to whether sure. or not. Absolutely. And also, what we what we have been asked to do by the Board of Trustees is to give an opinion on an application that was forwarded to us. And I think we've received our first application, and I think we as a group should be making but recommendations I, 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 based I, I, on the paperwork. I just have a question. So if we're looking at the paperwork. And if I have a question that perhaps we can't answer, well, who do we ask? How do it's I, how do I planning. opine? It's, it's going back to planning. All we're stating is in order to make an application, you need to have um, a floodplain development permit. I, I agree. And that's not included in your documentation. So I, we're going back to planning to say, where is this? I agree with everything you're saying, but the only thing I'm suggesting, suggesting is that if we're going to have this on an item, again, we're a volunteer group, at least for transparency purposes, make sure that everybody is has the opportunity to participate. Now, I don't know whether or not this if they knew or not, but the fact is, is if they didn't, then they should. This is the first one. And again, it's a teachable moment. I think that in the future, we have to you know, make sure that the other individuals are aware that we're gonna be discussing it so they can participate. And again, the community has a chance, there's a dialogue. So right. that's, I, I, I don't, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying other than the fact that I think that, and this is a unique situation. Now, if they are not able to participate, they should be able to. Now, if we give them the opportunity and they don't want to, then you're right. That's yeah, okay. Andrew. Andrew, I think one of the issues with that is we don't have direct communication with those people, and we have to actually establish a procedure of getting right. in, of how to get in touch with those people. Right. Uh, so until well, we have a procedure, well, so let, let me let me say this. One is, I, I I started this conversation that we were going to talk general regulations, basically not the Van Ness, right? Right. I think that we need as a as a, we need the FMAC needs to to tighten up the process. And Andrew, I hear your suggestion that they have an opportunity to be be heard at the meeting. Anybody, right? Not anybody, just, I agree. Um, they were on the agenda, right? From from when I sent it to to our village, you know, our person Sally, who puts it on the agenda. So if they had looked at our agenda today, they would see that they were on that that particular thing was on the agenda. And they knew we were meeting tonight because they right. commented so, about so that. I, so, so, so as far as I'm concerned as the chair, we have been totally transparent on this issue in deference to them at the moment. And just to make sure that we're, that we're being transparent, I'm saying we're just talking regulations tonight. And I think that Peggy's description and then Dan's addition to it, that, that the applicants have to follow this process, I think that could be our first, our initial response to the other committees. And so I would, I would say that unless our FMAC disagrees, I could send that to the, the land use committees just, by, just to say that the regulations need to be followed Tony, and, I was going to put offer to put together a draft of exactly what wasn't included in this document we received from planning. And our recommendation is these points need to be included. I think I think well, I, I think what should be considered. Yeah. yeah. I think I think one, one, one point about this is that we also don't know when they're when they're going again uh, uh, you know to the committee. If they're going again to the committee before we have a time to opine on it, then it, this could be lost. So what I'd like to recommend is I'll draft a memo to our committee. I'll circulate it to everybody, comment back, and then Tony, you can submit it to planning. And it's basically going to be that these are the, the application requirements. These are the points that we are missing in this applet that we feel is missing on that this. That we need to review. And then 
and then Andrew, I will put, I will, we can put them on the agenda for next month that they, they can, they can listen to our comments. And if we have additional items or whatever concerns or questions that that can happen next week, because as you said, this is a, a learning moment and it is the first. So, so yeah, is that, uh, do I have agreement on, on, on sending out an email to the other committees after a, a review by us all, and then putting 572 on for next month. I would suggest, um, Tony, to, to add to that, that you would send an email to them saying that this may will be on the agenda. They're welcome to come if they so try. Right. But Dan, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in charge of that. That's not my role. I put, if I put that on the agenda, if you're an applicant in the floodplain, we're the flood committee, please look at the agenda. I, I just can't. Wait, can, you, I, can I ask a question, Tony? Is there a way that when when I go in front of zoning planning, you, you get a whole package. Is there a way that when you pick up that initial package, that can be included in one of the guidelines? So that it, whether it's the architect, the, the lawyer, whomever, the, the near applicant knows that, okay, at one point or another, it's going to go down the, this avenue. And I it's on me now to check the agenda. So it's not on you, Tony. It's not on Peggy or Elsa. It's, it's you know, it's the applicant's obligation. Dennis, is that, Dennis, is that something that could be included in um, I don't think, I don't the building department do. requirements? Or is there a way to see? You're still? talking about the building department, I think. Yes, Dennis Drogan. Are you still here? Let's see, is he still on? Yeah, Heck, Dennis, are you still with us? Peg, that's a good question, right? Let's, let's send that to Dennis tomorrow. Or, I'm just, or I wanted to see if, I think he's off the call now. No, he's still on the call. Dennis, you here? I there see he his name. There he is, he's raising his hand. He had his hand up, so can Dennis, somebody- you muted. Right? You muted, I'm... Dennis. No, you have to promote him again, I think. Do you need yeah. to promote him again, or is he just need to- Dennis, you can talk. Can you, are, are you, you're still on mute though. Calling Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis. Can you unmute yourself? All right, maybe, he's, maybe he needed a break. I think we could all use a break. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me just ask you though, because I mean, um, you know, at, at, you know, when uh, Dan said, maybe I should take a look originally and see if I could find the Van Ranst in some of the other proceedings. And when I was doing that, I found other um, applications that were in the water, the water, um, you know, the, within the floodplains, and we have not received any of those. I don't know where those went, but I mean, I'm talking about, you know, but they were also from the Z zoning board of appeals. They were from the board of architecture review, um, you know. So I don't know if we're going to get those or not, or if it's only going to be from somewhere else. I mean, actually, Stephen, that's a good question because at what point, respectfully, Tony, Peg, and Dave. Elsa, we, we have a pretty large agenda as it is. Now we're gonna be, and again, I understand the spirit and intent of this. How do we prioritize? How do we sort of keep it up It should with become it? automatic when something is sent to planning. If it is in a floodplain, it comes to us. Okay. Yeah. Cause these are like, of, these are at different like, you know, points of points now, like they're at the zoning board of appeals, they're in the board of architecture review. Um, you know, with the two, it may, I be, saw that it may be too far down the road because we weren't established at that point, but somebody needs to opine on that. Dan, how can we get our hands around that? We were, we were there, but we weren't. The, well, Dennis the, is back on. The, Dennis. The, the, yeah. directive, the directive was that the Board of Trustees agreed and um, staff was to implement that as any as any land use application uh, you know, comes in, it is to be distributed uh, not to the land use boards and to um, uh, uh, FMAC uh, at the same time for anything that's in the floodplain, period. But is that, some of those applications may have started before this was enacted. So do they then retrospect, retroactively have I to- think, I think they've been going backward, going back to make sure that those applications have been sent if they're being processed they have not well we have the only I'm, one i'm saying that that's that that's no. what i we, we've been told i don't or i've been told 
Uh, so, maybe Dennis absolutely. can share some light on that uh, or check into that tomorrow. Dennis, are you there? Thanks. I, I appreciate it. So I'm on with two devices. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't. You keep jumping around on my computer. What <laughs> on? So um, no, no breaks. Um, straight ahead all the time. <laughs> As for the new applications coming in, everything should always be set with a trigger date. You know, so whenever you submitted something to the building department or to our administrative. Um, let's just say the administrative level, you know, we would have to go through that process until the building department will develop and adopt what was uh, put out there. So this is the first time that I'm hearing of this. Okay. Uh, that you're hearing of us being included in the process or about this particular application? About, about the process. Um, okay. okay. So Dennis, you, you may want to check with Jerry because we did this at the board level uh, and uh, that was uh, the months determination. Ago. Okay, yeah, so I, I'll, look, I'll look into it a little bit more. Um, so going, going back to the- And if that's not the instructions you're getting, please let me know, okay? So yeah, Dennis, I, what I think, so we need to be, we need to get a flow of applications that are happening in the floodplain in a timely manner so that we have time to look at it. And we, as been said, we're not a land use committee. We need so that we can opine on it. If, and this has happened on other committees, stuff doesn't get circulated until too late in the process. It doesn't do anybody any good. So we would like to get these applications right out of the gate so we can look at them, make opine, it seems that from today's experience, the applicant might want to hear what we're having to say, obviously. So we would then, I would include them in our agenda and or they would get notified somehow in the village that, that we were going to look at them that night. So if you could look into that, that would be great, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, for, for any applications that are going to be in the flood way, not the flood zone or in the flood right. plain. It, it, it is limited on how many people are doing construction or site work in the flood way. So currently we have one application that went to BAR uh, last week. So I can get a hold of the architect. Um, he was actually in office today. So we just, we just missed one window. But I can get a hold of the architect today and, and speak to Frank Tabalacci, who's my the, the, the building, my head, the, yep. the head of the department and the building inspector. And I'll have a discussion with him and maybe we can get that to come uh, to the board. Would they need site plan approval from the planning board? It's it's under a half acre. It would be an administrative SWIP that would be done for the property. It's actually just raising the house out of the flood, flood way. It's still in the flood zone, but out of the flood way. But that would be an application that would come to you. That's what you're looking to see, correct? Um, are you talking about the house on Winfield? I am. Well, that essentially isn't changing in terms of, there was already a structure there. So this, it, it's not, there's no more water being blocked than when the house was on the ground or up in the air, in fairness. That foundation was there, unless they're adding an addition. Um, but or, So in, in this case, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, if they are lifting the home and there's- Yes, they home, are. They well, yeah, they are lifting the home. But in no, the- but I, I appreciate that, but if they're strictly lifting the home based on the same footprint it was, they're really not changing there was a structure in the flood path to begin with. It's not changing the, if it's not changing the footprint, it shouldn't be affecting the flow of water. So now the, the clarity, right? Anything that isn't, any work that's being performed in the flood way, right? Mm -hmm. That should go to the committee. If there's and nothing- the flood plane as well. Yeah. There, there is the, the actual language, if I can, because I wrote the language. Excuse me. The, um, the actual language was when if there was if there was a new structure being created, 
uh, an enlargement of an existing, you know, an, I'm sorry, a new structure being created where there was no structure that exists, an enlargement of an, a structure uh, uh, that uh, already exists. That those were the triggers. Uh, <clears throat> we, they were, they weren't looking necessarily. I mean, if you have, if you have a building, you know, that has a structure that is, you know not being enlarged in terms of um, the water flow, um, that was not necessarily the requirement. Um, we weren't trying, it, I think the FMAC is trying to look at, you know, things that, you know, would alter um, flooding. In this you're building. basically, Dan, altering the footprint of what was there. And if you're enlarging yes. it or changing it, then that creates a separate set of issues and should be looked at by this committee. Yeah, let me give you an example because I have a couple of ones that I wrote down. Like, for instance, uh, there's a Board of Architecture Review agenda, and one of the uh, items was 732 the Parkway. And uh, the two people, homeowner, proposed a garage renovation and lodgement. Uh, zoning approval variance uh, granted uh, for pre-existing legally non-conforming garage. So that would be a case where they're making a garage larger and that address is within a, with, within a floodplain. So I would think that's the type of thing we'd want to look at because it's going to yeah. be taking up more space. Yes. Now, there were several examples like that. And, you know, that's just one of them. So, so for me as a building inspector, right, when we say the term enlarging, um, we use that in our zoning code as well, which is a gray area in the code and it's interpreted different ways depending on the design professional. So I understand, uh, Dan, how, you're, how you laid out the groundwork for that, right? So when, when a building inspector looks at expanding, enlarging a property, it's not just by the, um, the footprint of the home, but it's about the volume of the home. So if before we had a single family, a, a single story ranch, which that was there before, now we're increasing the volume, meaning the size. So it is now being built upward. Is there a change in the foundation on this property? The original proposal, I believe, was to be, let's say, was on posts or legs or piers. So that wouldn't impede the flow. There'll actually be less resistance. So you know, I, have I, haven't, I haven't seen what Dan has written. I'm Sorry about that. So, you know, if you can forward that out to me, I'd like it. I'll have a conversation with Frank and Jerry as well. Um, you know, so I can educate my Dennis? On what you're basing on. Yes. Dennis, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to throw an aside in because I think it's relevant. When I elevated my house because of flooding, I was planning on putting two piers in for the addition. And we did not put the piers in because the building manager, the head of the building department at the time would not let us do anything without a HECRAS study. So we ended up cantilevering the extension. So while the square footage of the house changed, the footprint did not. So how, how onerous would it be to say, if there's an application for, the, for new construction or alteration in a floodway or a flood, flood zone, we at least get, get a flag on it? No. I agree with that statement. That that's a very clear cut ask. Anything that's being built in the flood way, you would like to see in the flood zone. You know that that's more of a reach because it's not in the flood way. So it depends on what you're determining. What we you had ask. originally said all flood areas, flood plain, flood way, and flood zone. Okay, so you would be the catch all to yes. the HCCM. So for example, um, I don't mean to speak out of turn, but Van Ranst is not in the flood way, but it's in the flood plain. Right, and Dennis, if, if, if we could start with, we get an address and, and is, you know, is there a way to us to get, if it's in the flood way or the flood plain, we get an address and a brief description of the application. It gets on our radar and then I know Stephen and Peggy are, are very good at this, I'm not saying the rest of you aren't, but they could then poke into it a little bit and see. Tony, anything, anything that's going to planning, at the time that it goes to planning, a carbon copy should just be sent to us if it's in the floodplain. Yeah, and also I was seeing, when I was looking over the, um, you know, the, the, the review, they had a lot of stuff, they, you know, they had, the, you know, that, and then they had a lot of 
background stuff, which I did, you know, honestly didn't look at, but they, they had all the paperwork that you, I guess you would have along with it in the Board of Architecture Review note, uh, you know, minutes or the Zoning Board of Appeals minutes. So that all that kind of was there, uh, you know, for looking, for looking at, obviously, I, <laughs> for the purposes is I didn't look at it. And if I probably looked at it, most of the stuff, I wouldn't make hide a hair of a lot of it, but it, it is kind of all there, you know? So, so Dennis, what Peggy's saying is if it goes before the planning board and it's in a floodplain or a floodway, can we get kind of either no, notification, say? Yeah. It, it tell, so look, it, look into it, Dennis, and, and then get, get back to us on, on, on that, okay? I, I, I will, but I, I just, um, so maybe when we're off the Zoom, we can have a logistics conversation. Um, That's what I suggested. I think that that would be a good idea for you guys. Maybe one more thing we're going to add to the um, the after list. Okay, great. All right. So I'd like to wrap this meeting up. Is there any other absolutely urgent business for this evening? Dan, Peg, nope. a Andrew, Tony, Dave, thank you very much. Kelly, also, wait, Kelly has his hand back up. I think. Yeah, can I just make uh, one suggestion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to thank you all very much. Obviously, uh, Mindy, uh, who spoke earlier, rather um, inspired me because I was going to say the same thing. Is is there an email list or some sort of call to action list that we can we can get you had on? One once, Tony, back in two thousand seventeen, you actually you guys put one together. So yeah, it sounds like something that I think would be very helpful if we had, had one. Yeah, I, I so, think that, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, yeah, we had so, one and that is. Yeah, so we can like we can get updates, obviously, and then we can you can say, hey, we need you to email the mayor. We need you to email so and so. I'll do it. And it sounds like you know one of the positives in this meeting tonight is there's a lot of passion out there. There's a lot of people that are that are really want to see this move forward. So um, if you could uh, just give us an email to start with, and and um, we can sign up and we can we can get this thing powering forward and uh, move you, on to to move on to April. Kelly, you still have 17 people that are still on. Uh, it would be helpful if they would send their emails and then we can start creating that list and, you know, build on it from there. All right. So, so we can just send it to Tony then? Sure. You can send it to Tony if you don't. Village you email. Yeah, there, there's a village email for Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. Absolutely. Yeah, ju just send it to FMAC. It's, it's called Flood on the village email. Thank you very much. All right. So a motion. Can I get a motion to yes. close the meeting? Uh, yeah, before the closing meeting, I just wanted to mention this one thing. Um, I think we should try to find out when the next Van Rand's planning meeting is, uh, because if it happens before the next flood mitigation meeting, it, this will all be for not, not. So I think we should try to find that out. And if it happens to be before then, I think we should maybe have a, a meeting between us and just you know, uh, another public meeting between us and discuss that before the before well, the actual meeting. I'm going to put comments together anyway, so everyone will have them. All right, that's a good idea, Steve. Uh, Steve, okay. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't know when the next meeting is that they will be on, but I don't think it's going to move as quickly as my, you know, that would preclude you from meeting in your next meeting to uh, review whatever you'd like to review. Yeah. Chair, okay. members of flood mitigation, I've got to jam. All right, so Good Andrew, night, give me 30 more seconds. <laughs> so um, let's see, who was it? Kelly, you, you mentioned positive again. So this, I think this has been a really positive meeting. Thank you, FMAC members. Thank you, everyone who, who, who has shown up, who's spoken. I think we got the energy back. And Andrew, you mentioned that in 2016, we had a lot of energy going. I think we got the energy back. This is really great and important. We've got money. We've got people with brains. We've got people with passion. So I need a motion to close the meeting. Motion. <laughs> Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Favor. Yes. Okay, everybody. Have a good evening. Thanks Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You Thank, Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. you, Dan. Good night. Uh, bye Chair, bye. do you want to stay on to have this conversation now? Hi, Dennis. Yeah, I could stay on for a minute. Uh, this, this is going to be, uh, I think, uh, it, you, vote, you, vote, you voted to close the meeting. We have to close the meeting. Dennis, I, I'll, I'll speak to you. I'll speak to you uh, 
I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay, done.